Now let's take a look at how Orbital Shift helps managers control labor costs. One of the first things for us to observe is the displaying of time scheduled. If the time column is not displaying for me automatically, I can view it by making a selection in my filter panel on the left, and then clicking update. With the time column viewable, I can now survey how many hours I've assigned per cost center. Here I see I've assigned 98 and a half hours of position A this week versus 326 hours I've assigned for position B. I can also see how many hours I've assigned per employee. For example, I notice that I've assigned Katie 15 hours as position A, but she's working 20 hours for the whole business, and that's because she's picking up shifts in other positions or departments depending upon the structure of my business. If I scroll down, I can also see that I've assigned an employee more than 40 hours this week. As the time changes color to red, alerting me to the potential of overtime. Let's view more information about an employee. One way to do this is by simply selecting the employee's name on the schedule or selecting the employees page from the menu bar. Here we can see the employee's account information. This is where I come to reset an employee's password, change your username, or update the status of their account. I can also enter an employee's communication information and messaging preference, which we'll come back to a little later in this video. By selecting the Positions tab above, I can manage which positions this employee can work. Also an hourly wage or salary can be assigned for each employee. The Event Report tab allows me to review a summary of events related to each employee. I can set a date range and select Update. I can view events by count, time, or percentage. I can view when employees work or don't work, or all their event types. This report is great for comparing event assignment and requests, as well as aiding in performance reviews. Now with the employee wages and salaries entered, if I return to the schedule page, I can update the filter panel to view an expense column. This allows me to compare and contrast cost centers as well as see what an employee is costing me by position or for the whole business. Again, if an employee is scheduled for overtime, the time and expense column highlight in red and correctly the overtime rate is applied to the expense. If I scroll to the bottom of the schedule, I can see my total expense. Below that is my budget. If my total expense is in red, I know I've gone over my allocated budget. To view my budget, I can simply select the budget link or select budgets from the menu bar. Now on this page, I select a week on the calendar and configure to view one or more departments. I have options to either manually enter in a budget or calculate a budget based on a desired labor percentage and estimated sales. Once a weekly budget is created, I can compare against the cost of this week's schedule. Here I see my labor expense and where overtime is occurring, and if my total expense is in red text, I know I've gone over my weekly budget. I can scan to see which day is off the most, and then select the total expense to revisit the daily or weekly schedule. Now I can make some adjustments and see how this impacts my bottom line. Another aspect of controlling labor costs, which is made easier with Orbital Shift, is the ability to view all your employee options before transferring a shift. For example, Ellie Connell has made a cover request on Thursday. She made the cover because she was originally assigned a shift event, and she is now looking to see if someone can cover this shift for her. As a manager, I can select this event to consider transferring it to another employee. Next. I use the Transfer To drop-down list to evaluate my options. In the list, there are three distinct categories, the first of which is Shift Requests. These are other employees who have volunteered to work for Ellie. These requests are sorted in the order they were received, so I know Sarah volunteered first, then followed by Kyle. The next category is other employees who are available to work for Ellie per the schedule, but have not volunteered to do so. The last category is other employees with conflicts. 
These are employees who are either already scheduled to work at this time or have already been approved to have time off based upon your custom settings. Now, the time in parentheses next to each employee name is the number of hours each employee will be at on the schedule if I were to transfer this shift to them. So if I transfer this shift to Brian, he'd be at 26 hours on the schedule. Or if I transfer this shift to Lindsay, she'd be scheduled for 30 hours this week. By giving you all your employee options at a glance, you can better evaluate shift transfer scenarios and trade-offs. Another aid in helping to control labor costs is the ability to adjust schedules on the fly and alert your employees to those changes. For example, if a scenario arises where I needed a shift to start a half hour later than previously scheduled, I can simply edit the shift start time, select to send the employee an event message informing them of the change, and simply update the event. Now, we are all on the same page and better able to respond to schedule changes as needed.